Hi, I'm Ken Trimber, and welcome to the KTA University podcast. This podcast is going to discuss different types of inspector certifications to hopefully provide some clarity on that subject, since there are a number of certs available. My guest is Bill Corbett, who's going to give us a little bit of information on the topic. Mm -hmm. Bill, let's start with uh, SSPC certifications. SSPC has BCI, CCI, PCI. Mm -hmm. What are all of those inspector certifications? Well, SSPC, which is the, the Society for Protective Coatings, uh, they offer several options for certification, and they're really industry-driven. For example, their CCI, which is an acronym for Concrete Coatings Inspector, is, is really driven towards those individuals who need to be knowledgeable if they're inspecting uh, either installation of flooring or coatings on concrete, how to make sure the concrete is prepared properly and also making sure the coating system is installed properly. Uh, they also have what's called a BCI course, which is bridge coatings inspection. So for those individuals who are going to be doing coatings inspection on bridge and highway structures, that is a more appropriate certification for them because uh, in that course they actually have a session on bridge nomenclature, uh, the different elements of a bridge and how they're identified so they can uh, properly record that information on their daily inspection reports. Um, and they will also talk about, for example, soluble salt testing in that class because it's common to use de-icing materials on bridge structures where that information typically would not be covered in the concrete coating inspector program. Uh, the protective coating inspector training and certification program really deals with all industries. It's not written specifically for bridge or for petrochemical or for water waste treatment or water. It's designed to cover all industries in general where you're going to install protective coatings or linings to protect steel, but they do uh, uh, address primarily the steel as the substrate in that okay. class. All right, so that's SSPC. What about NACE, their CIP pro okay. program? So the National Associ Association of Corrosion Engineers has had a uh, training and certification program for, oh, I'll, I'll bet you it's been 30, 35 years at least now. And their program uh, deals, again, with all aspects of, of coating installation, coating and lining installation. It's not really industry specific either. Uh, but the major difference between the SSPC, Protective Coating Inspector Program, which has three levels to it, and the NACE Coating Inspector Training Program, which also has three levels, is the, the SSPC program is one week long, where the NACE program is a two-week program. Uh, so the timing investment is a little greater with NACE. Uh, the information is a little more broad, perhaps. Uh, it, it deals with a lot more uh, of the various coating types that a coatings inspector may see uh, compared to uh, the SSPC program. But both are well respected in the industry. All right, so both seem reasonably similar. Is there reciprocity between the two? There is not. Uh, you know, uh, the, the NACE program does not recognize the SSPC, Protective Coating Inspector Program, as equivalent seat time, so that if you went through perhaps the SSPC course and said, well, I just want to take the, the NACE uh, examination because you've already gone through the classwork, uh, they will not permit you to do that, and vice versa. Mm, okay. So you have to take their class to get their cert. Correct. Okay. There's another certification, I don't want to confuse things, but SSPC has PCS. What is that? Okay. So the SSPC, and ironically, NACE International also has a PCS, and that's Protective Coating Specialist Certification. And in this case, uh, those courses are written more for uh, coating specifiers, those that are going to design a coatings project versus inspect a coatings project. Are those two programs reasonably similar since they're both called PCS? They're, they are reasonably similar, yes. Uh, obviously not the same, but they're, they're but similar. But no reciprocity again, I assume. Exactly, yes. All right, so if I needed to hire an inspector to do a job, would I hire a PCS or one of the inspector certs? If I was going to have uh, a project where I needed coatings inspection during the construction process, right. I would hire an inspector for that. But if I was going to have a specification written or if I was going to have an assessment done to determine the condition of the existing coating, 
I would bring out a protective coating specialist because the, the PCS program, while it touches on inspection, isn't really designed to train people on how to inspect coatings. And also, the coating inspector program doesn't teach a lot about how to uh, do life cycle cost of coatings, how to assess the condition of coatings, and also how to help prepare specifications. The programs okay. don't uh, you know, address those uh, at the same time. Okay, so if I'm designing a job I w and writing the spec, I want a PCS. If I want someone to inspect the ongoing work, it's one of the inspector certs. Yes, and, and, okay. and unfortunately what we see in some cases <laughs> is someone will want a, maybe a, a, a tank condition assessment and they'll have a, a NACE or an SSPC certified coatings inspector come out and do that and unfortunately they don't oftentimes they wouldn't have acquired those skills in those training classes. Okay. They might get it through experience but not through actual formal training. Sure. So it's important to make sure you're specifying or requesting the, the correct credential. All right. Uh, like a, for a PE, you have to maintain that certification. Yes. Do you have to maintain these certs in some way? Yes. For both the SSPC, protective coating inspector, concrete coating inspector, bridge coating inspector, as well as the NACE program, they do require uh, recertification. Uh, the time period varies a little bit, it might be anywhere from three to four years, but you have to resubmit paperwork uh, showing that you're maintaining your knowledge in the industry uh, and that you're still involved in, in those uh, activities. So uh, you said maintaining your knowledge of the industry. What are some of the most important steps that you see in, in maintaining that certification? Yeah, and that's, that's a good question because our, our industry changes all the time. Uh, New standards come out, existing standards are revised. So what happens is, is you're taught, you know, hopefully the standards that are current at the time you're going through the training program, but it is very important that you maintain knowledge of changes to those standards or any new standards that might come out because those standards could appear in specifications and either you're going to inspect against those specifications or if you're a specification writer, you may want to consider invoking some of those specifications. So maintaining uh, that knowledge of updates to industry standards or new industry standards that come out and even new instrumentation that comes out is very important as well. That's a good point because industry standards are supposed to be updated every five years. Yes. yes. So there could be a, a number of changes. Absolutely. Okay. And we have to remember, too, that we've got a variety of standards, and standards from ASTM that are frequently invoked in specifications or that we would want to invoke in a specification. We need to know what they say uh, before we invoke them or before we inspect against them. It could almost be a full-time job just keeping current yes. with standards. <laughs> yes. Any other comments about the certs? Uh, nothing sp uh, specific. Uh, I, I think it is important that once you obtain a certification to maintain knowledge of standards like we talked about and that can be challenging to do. Uh, there are sources, uh, there are online news feeds, there are also uh, publications that are available that publish current standards. Uh, ASTM uh, can notify you when new standards come out if you're on their subscription list uh, so you're aware of new standards or revisions to standards. So maintaining that's very important uh, and also whenever you are requesting a certified protective coating specialist or a certified inspector to come out to your job, make sure you know what you're asking for and make sure that you've asked for the, the correct credentials uh, before they get there. Excellent. That ends this podcast on uh, certification and trying to clear up some of the confusion with all these acronyms and different types of certs that are available. Log on to ktuniversity.com to look at other podcasts.